Hi, I'm Debbie, and welcome to Divine Destiny with Debbie. Today we're reading for Cancer Season. Now this will be for all the individual signs, but in the beginning this introduction will be a general overview of Cancer Season. Now Cancer Season will be from June 20th to July 22nd when Leo Season begins. Now, you know that when I am doing the longer readings, which I kind of look at as more the chapters, I use a bunch of cards, a bunch of decks. I use my Rodley Valentine Angel, de um, Angel Tarot cards, kind of gives me the main message. I then go to my John Holland Psychic Tarot and Oracle cards for some clarification. We then go to my Osha Zen Tarot cards, words of advice. I'm kind of getting to the finishing with my Radley Valentine Archangel Power Tarot cards. I also will be pulling one, just one, because I've been liking these cards a little bit more so, my Radley Valentine Guardian Angel cards. Now, I will finish then with my um, Emily Anderson Crystal deck. Yes, I have prayed, meditated, and infused all the decks with Reiki energy, but remember, this is a general reading. It may or may not resonate. Take what you like. Leave the rest. Okay? Okay. Now, I'm an intuitive channeler. I open myself to higher power. My job, just deliver the message. And that's what I try to do. Um, remember that, oh, remember the button. Please like, share, subscribe, because it does help. And thank you so much for all of your support. I really do appreciate it. Now, Let's do a little bit of the introduction where I want to go over some of the things happening in cancer season. Now, I'm also going to pull randomly uh, a card from my Weight Rider traditional tarot. Okay, so like I said, June 20th, cancer season begins. It's also the summer solstice. Cancer is a water sign. It will, it will actually begin at 11.32 p.m., Eastern Standard Time. This is going. There's going to be a lot of truth in life during Cancer season. There will be some high emotions. There will be some rather deeper emotions too. But this is about Cancer. Cancer season wants to know the truth. But the Cancer season also wants to know the quality. There's quality in truth. Okay. It's not. It's so if you're giving half truths, Cancer season will not accept that. I will say that that probably will affect a lot of the air signs too, because if you're not given the whole truth, if there's, you know, if you're lying through a mission, air signs will not like that at all. They will not, and you'll, they'll catch you on that, okay? But all of the signs will really, it will kind of rub you raw, any kind of lies through a mission. So this is going to be one of those times that, you know, there's got to be some quality, there's got to be quality in the truth. So let's pull a couple of cards for here and see what we might have as an overview for my cancers. Not for my cancers, for my cancer season. Here we go. Put you over there. First card will be Wheel of Fortune. Things are moving on. Things have to change. You know, so this is a 10 transition, but this is, it's meant to be. There is some changes happening. Again, there's going to be, you know, I know I, I talk about, um, Saturn with Aquarius, but this has more depth to this. This has more strength to this. And this is this is part of that um, karmic type of energy. That's It's like karma cannot be denied. Karma cannot be denied. Next card is, there is the seven of pentacles. Pentacles is earth energy, Taurus, Capricorn, and also, our Virgo, this is about, you know, seven is that divine number for me, too. It's a divine umbrella. This is about rewards. This is about a lot of the work that has been happening. You should start seeing some rewards for what your efforts, for the things, you know, for what, what you have put in. If you have put in a lot of energy, a lot of positive energy, you should start seeing a lot of positive rewards returned. Now, next card is the King of Wands. Now, Wands is our fire energy, Leo, Sagittarius, and Aries. There's a lot of Leo energy going on in Cancer. And with the Leo energy, there's going to be some surprises going on. Now, the king has underlying is air energy, thought processes, thinking things through. So there could be some surprises coming during this time. And it's again, it's something that needs to happen. It's something that will happen 
but it's it's seeing also the king of wands is also seeing more of the future so that does go along with a lot of what this is things have to happen the king of wands is wa waiting and watching and hoping and making things happen also okay so now I talked about that this will be the summer solstice in the northern hemisphere. That's the longest day of the year, meaning the longest day that we have light and sunshine. It is the shortest day in the southern hemisphere. It's the, you know, it's when there's more dark than there is light. So that's one thing going on. Okay, so on the 20th of June also, and this is at 11.05 a.m., Jupiter will go retrograde. It is still in Pisces. During this time, you know, and Pisces is a water sign, and I think this kind of fits with what we're having here. I kind of get these, you know, just, just my own impressions, um, what, I, what I was also reading. I do go to other sites to kind of see, you know, what's happening. But my, my, my feelings were that it was going to be warm, cozy. It's kind of rose-colored glass time. Now, with this retrograde, there should also be a sense of relief and release. But it's also the start. The start of this will also bring about what's called a honeymoon phase. Now, the 21st of June, Venus in Cancer trines with Neptune, which is also a water sign. There's going to be truth coming out, especially about love. Now, if it's a true love, it will work out really. It will actually bring out that positive truth. If it is not, again, lies will not be tolerated, even if they're through a mission. Now, the 22nd of June, Mercury goes direct in Gemini. However, don't get too excited because what happens is it will take about 14 days before it leaves what's called the retrograde shade. So there's still a little bit of that karma going. The closer you are to the, um, the 22nd, you know, as we go out, and it leaves that around the July 7th. The closer it gets to, you know, July 7th, the weaker that karmic cycle is. Anyway, the 24th of June is a full moon, and it will be in Capricorn. Now, that will be at 2.39 p.m., again, Eastern Standard Time. My, <laughs> all the things that I'm gathering, my thoughts are, this is where we pull up our big kid pants. We need to be real to ourselves. We need to be honest to ourselves and to others. There's going to be a lot of balance. You know, and remember, this will go from, you know, this goes through that cycle. They, there needs to be some balancing between home and life. Oh, I pulled the wrong cards. Um, and let's see. And again, the words, be true to thine own self comes up. Okay, now let's go on. Let's see what happens. Let's pull some cards for the full moon in Jupiter. Not in Jupiter, I'm sorry, in Capricorn. Here we go. Put these again. There. First card. Okay, so this is reversed. We have a one, new beginnings, new start. The magician, the magician is about making things happen. So remember, this is the time that I also, the full moon is when I tell you it's a good time to release, relinquish, and request. Now, when the moon, the new moon is going to the full moon, that's when it's getting bigger. They call that the waxing moon. That's the time to request. When the moon is getting smaller and it's going, you know, it's called the waning moon. And that's when you release. Around the full moon, and I would say, you know, basically go like three days before, day of, and three days after, is a good time to release, relinquish, and request. Release what's holding you back, relinquish what you don't need, but to also request. So the magician is basically saying you can make things happen around this full moon. Remember, Capricorn is an earth sign, so it's more tangible energy. Anyway, next card is here, the Page of Cups. Now, the Page of Cups has that mixture between the water sign of cups and the page's underlying energy of earth. So there is that mixture going on, and that's exactly what we have here. But it's kind of whimsical at the same time. It's kind of like, you know, expect maybe a little bit of the unexpected. I know that goes with Uranus and Taurus all the time. But, you know, it's kind of a expect, expect, expect. And if you want to expect something negative, you know, put it out, comes back. If you want to expect positive, put it out. Now, your next card here is, oh, we've got actually four cards. Next card is Ace of Wands, your air energy that we've talked about. 
I'm sorry, wand is your fire energy. Passionate. Aces is a new beginning. One. So we have a couple of ones here. So it could be a really wild start. It could be something that, you know, you really want to go after too. So there's really positive energy around this full moon. Next card is the page of pentacles. So we have two ones and we have two pages. Pentacles is our earth energy. This is about new jobs, new beginnings, new, I'm sorry, new ways to make money. Okay, now, a couple of things else we have going on here on June 25th. Neptune goes retrograde, and that's also going to be in Pisces. Now we have the 27th June of June. Venus enters Leo. There's going to be a lot of energy around love. So this is going to be, if you're going to fall in love, it's going to be big and generous. If you're going to break up, it's going to be big and generous, okay? So so it's not going to necessarily be um, something that's going to, it's not going to be moderate. There's going to be a lot of things happening. You know, it's going to, you know, you meet somebody or any of the relationships that I talk about, you know, your work, job, career, personal, intimate, interpersonal, family, or home, you know, something's going to start, it's going to be big. It's going to be really, you know, oh, this is great. If you're, if it's, like I said, if it's being pulled apart, it's going to be big also. It's not something, you know, this Leo and Venus, and, and also to remember, this is when it's starting. So this is going to go on until it goes into Cancer. I think it goes into Cancer. No, I'm sorry, it goes into Virgo on the 21st of July. So this will be going on for a little bit of time. It's going to be big. If, and like I said, if it's positive, it's going to feel great. If it's not positive, eh, not so great. Anyway, now this I did take from another site, and I will post that site because I did like a lot of the things that they talked about with cancer. But I want to make sure that, you know, this, this is something from another site. Um, this one they were saying, and I'm going to say this is going to be more from June 30th to maybe July 10th, high risk of unexpected shocks and surprises. I'll post this in the community page, their link. And I've posted their site before, but not for a long time. So basically, the first, the first of July, we have Mars, which is in Leo, opposing Saturn, which is retrograde in Aquarius. On the 4th of July, we have Mars again, squares with Uranus and Taurus. You know, Leos know what that means. That's always Uranus and Taurus. Expect that unexpected. We have um, Cancer on the 5th, sextiles with Uranus and Taurus. We have Leo uh, on the 7th, opposing Saturn, which is in um, Aquarius, and on the 8th, we have Venus squaring with Uranus. So there's a lot of um, unexpected, there's going to be a lot of weird type of energy. Leo is about, you know, Leo has heart. Leo has very strong commitments. Now, I'm not, you know, Leo wants, you know, Leo is very straightforward in many ways, in many ways. So so there's a lot of things that might be happening around that time. On July 9th, we have our new moon in Cancer. My, my um, feeling on that when I was, you know, putting this together, and like I said, I pray and meditate, um, the message was the pressure brings the diamond. You know, so you know how they have a, you know, like the piece of coal or charcoal or whatever, the pressure brings the diamond. So new moons are the start of a new cycle where it is about, again, requesting. Let's see. We're just going to pull one card here for the new moon and see what that might say. Okay, well, I don't know. Do you want to? Yeah, we're going to take you out. Okay, no. This is the card. Here we go. The Hermit. Okay, so the hermit is a nine. Nine has a completion to it, but the hermit is also saying maybe it's time to back away a little bit. Maybe it's time to step away a little bit. You know, make sure you connect. Connect with your higher power, your guardian angel, spirit guide, voice of the universe, your divine. Um, also to, you know, the source. Also, it's a good time for you to do a lot of reflection. Okay, so just we're just going to go with that for the um, new moon. Mercury on the 11th enters Cancer. Serious talks, discussions about heart, home. But again, this is about seeing the truth. It may be an extremely emotional time, but it's about seeing the truth. And, you know, and again, during Cancer, it's, you know, don't lie. Don't lie, through, especially with omission. 
okay? Meaning, well, I, you know, maybe it wasn't a real lie, but I just didn't tell you the truth, okay? So then on the 21st, Venus enters Virgo. That is going to be a nicer, it's a little calmer, it's more, Virgo being the Earth energy, it's going to be more grounded energy. Just be a little careful about smugness. That just came popped for me. On the 22nd, the sun enters Leo at 10.27 a.m. Eastern Time. And I did put this here because the 23rd, there will be the full moon in Aquarius at 10.36 p.m. Eastern Time. So again, we have that, you know, that change signs, the, you know, the, the changing energies plus that full moon energy. So, whew. So just kind of wanted to let you know um, what I was feeling a little bit about this. I will add this to the front. And of course, anyone that cross watches, I will put the time that this is over also in the link. Okay, so now remember the like, share, subscribe. But now let's start with our readings. Hello, my Capricorns, and welcome to Cancer Season. So let's see what we've got going on for you, my Capricorns. Oh, I have so many Capricorns that I love in my life, so it's always interesting to see. Always interesting. And I love all of my, the people that write to me and subscribe, so thank you so much. You've always been so supportive of me. Let's see what we have. One, two, and three. Yes, I have family, friends. I have a lot of Capricorns surrounding me or being supportive of me. Okay, three cards. Face down. This one's reversed. Let's see what we have for Cancer season. First card is Three of Air. Okay, this is the one that everyone says, put it back in the deck. Let's reshuffle. This is about just letting go of things. This is about, okay, air energy is our... Libra, our Aquarius, it's our Gemini, it is our thought process, it's making plans, it's stink, it's kind of like, I don't want to go into stink and think, and that's more than nine of air, um, it's the sword, it, you know, it's sword energy, it, it's just basically, you know, your thought processes, it's, it's so much in your head, thinking about things, kind of going, well, I should have made these decisions, so this, this cancer season may make you reflect on past seasons in your life may make you reflect and look at things that have possibly gotten you to where you need to go. Now, on the, on the surface of three of air, I say, let it go. Let it get out of there. But maybe if you keep bringing it back, maybe it is time for you to look at it some more. Now, we do have a little bit of that Gemini, that Mercury and Gemini um, energy. Remember, the shadow of Mercury retrograde will continue until a little bit into July. So there could also be somebody that, from your past that wants to talk to you more so. And that person brings up some bad memories to you, or maybe there wasn't some closure with that person. Okay? I don't know. You know what about closure? Sometimes I feel like closure, okay... You know, maybe closure is good, but sometimes closure helps the other person and doesn't necessarily help the person that's really, that you know, like you or me. So, you know, I'm not saying I don't want to help someone else, but at the same time, I'm kind of like, I don't want to put myself through more in order to help you become, feel less, okay? So I don't know, this, this kind of gets a closure type of energy with it. And I don't know, sometimes my thought is just walk away, just walk away. Okay, no, but that's me. My, my Capricorns, you are a little different. You like to go in their face. You like to say, okay, fine, you want me, you want to talk about this? Let's do this. You know what? Okay, choices, choices, always about choices, my Capricorns. Anyway, great sadness. <laughs> Take time to heal. The need to forgive yourself or others. Next card is King of Earth. King of Earth. So I don't know. I don't know what this is all about. Maybe again. Maybe looking back. Maybe looking back brings you to this place in your in your life in your career. King's underlying energy, air. Okay. So we've talked about air. Very smart. Very thoughtful. Very much a planner. Earth is your energy, along with Taurus and Virgo. You know, 
what you can touch, what you can feel. Now we also, you know, it's also with your job, your, your money, your home, something with that too. Now remember, we have the full moon in Capricorn. So own this one. Use this energy. Put your energy out there. I would also say besides speaking it, also write it down. Plop it on your refrigerator. All the things that you're looking for. You're releasing, you're, request, you're releasing, you're relinquishing, you're requesting. But the king of earth, it, you know, it basically skyrockets to the top of his profession. But the thing is, and it's not so much that he's skyrocketing, I shouldn't put it that way, because he's earned each step. He's earned each way, each place, okay? He is now the subject matter expert. He is now that professional. So there, I mean, so maybe it's time for you to let this go, whatever this is. Maybe this is somebody who is an old um, business partner. Maybe you do need to reconcile. Because like I said with my, I don't mean reconcile as in going back, because I'm kind of like, you know, what's ever in the rear view mirror, I want to just distance myself. But my Capricorns, you actually are good at talking to people from your past. Maybe this will give you that new lead, okay? Or maybe this will give you that new business uh, venture. So, the king of earth is generous, professional, responsible, and practical. A successful time. Confidently accept opportunities you're offered. The Midas touch. The Midas touch means you can make money. This is a time for you to make money. Okay, next card. The five of air. Okay, so now we have the three and the five of air. And these aren't necessarily, you know, these are kind of cards that want to try to pull you back a little bit. So it could be, it could be energies around you that's trying to keep you from succeeding even. Because the king of earth is definitely your energy saying that things can happen, things can move. You are, you know, you're, you're ready to move on this. But we have these two things. Now, the five brings about changes, positive, negative, doesn't matter. Five is also about grace, so there's some divine grace here. But five of air kind of makes it like, oh, maybe there's some emotional choices that you're making. Maybe you're being a little bit rebellious uh, with this. So five of air is kind of this, is this um, energy around you that you're not necessarily um, sticking to your plan. You're not necessarily going after what you want. You're letting some distractions come in and take you off of your course. It's okay. It's okay. An unwise choice. Learn what you can from this situation. Review everyone's motives. Now, considering that this is air energy, I would be, I would try to be aware and maybe a little cautious around people that have air energy. Okay? So that would be your Aquariuses, your Geminis, your Libras also. So just... Not quite sure, but I just would say let, let's be careful around those people because they can, I mean, you know, you might be very much, this is where I'm going, they can talk a good game. And, then I, and I don't mean that negatively. I really don't mean that negatively. But, you know, many times your air signs, they, they can see both sides of a situation to the point that you're kind of like, I don't really know which side won. I don't know, I don't know which side won. Okay, so just, 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 I would... Take their advice maybe with a little grain of sand, with a grain of sand, but you know, I, and I don't call out other signs. I would just say because it's so strongly around you. Let's see my John Holland Psychic Tarot and Oracle cards. Let's see what we have here. Okay, first card. Discontentment and boredom. Okay, we have a four stability. There's also, but you know, this is like saying, I, I want movement. I, I don't want to be where I'm at. I want movement. Okay, so this is kind of like you want, you want movement. And maybe you're getting, you know, and maybe these people are giving you very good advice. It's just you don't like to hear it. Okay, next card. Shadow. So we have an 18. Now shadow is looking into the deeper side of things, looking into that mysterious side. Sometimes it's the moon, you know, like I say, you know, when the moon, remember you have your full moon, it is in, it is in Capricorn. I do feel that it will push you forward. It will be positive for you. Um, you know, also too, I am, you know, remember that Gemini is, I mean, Mercury is in Gemini right now. So you may want to wait until it goes into Cancer, you know, goes into Cancer Mercury before making major decisions. Okay, so maybe that's where this air energy is all about. But the moon, we have an 18, so we have a one and a, you know, one 
new beginnings, or a 10, transition, 8, unlimited possibilities. Add it together, 1 plus 8 is a 9, and there we go with, you know, let's wrap things up. But shadows, kind of looking into that metaphysical, kind of knowing that things are happening behind the scenes that you're not necessarily aware of. Like the, you know, like the moon, the bag of the moon, we don't know what's going on there. I mean, maybe other people know. I know there's a lot of things out there but that, you know, talk about the back of the room, but I don't know what's behind there, okay? There is things going on in that supernatural realm that we're not quite sure. And remember, your full moon is right around the solstice. And with the solstice, I mean, it's not quite there, but the solstice has a lot of um, supernatural energy going on around that. We want to keep it positive. We want to keep it elevated anyway next card two so there is movement there is choices there is decisions coming to you so again i'm not quite sure these this three and this five kind of get me a little bit off again this air energy you're going to have to tell me you're going to have to tell me what's going on with this now let's go on let's see what we have with words of advice from my osha zen tarot and maybe so this could be very much in the beginning of cancer season. So this could be that full moon to that new moon type of energy. So let's see what we have words of advice from Osha. Here we go. One, two, and three. Okay, I think these are reversed. Here we go. First card. Ah, no, it's not. Innocence. Innocence. So here we have a 19. Okay, so we have X1, X, Roman numerals. So that's a 19. So that, you know, again, that 9 energy, we talked about that. You add the 1 plus 9, it becomes a 10. 10, 1 plus 0, 0 is, is God, universal energy. You add it together, it becomes a 1. The thing is, I guess with innocence, what I like about this, it's kind of like saying, don't take things too deeply. Okay, don't read more into it than what is said. Sometimes people just like to talk. And if you go back and say, well, you made some, you know, because of you, I took your advice. Well, I, what, do I, what do I know? What do I know? So sometimes you need to, you know, just kind of let things flow over you. Okay, I do like innocence. It's like here's this person who's probably seen so much of the world and yet, or, you know, has seen many years past pass and yet takes such pleasure in something so simple let's go on not okay so now we have morality morality is interesting so you have to really be careful why i think it's interesting morality is very much structure morality is just very rigid do not deviate do not go outside the box do not try to be more than who you are this is who you are. And I kind of get that from these three and five. This is who you are, Capricorn. Why are you trying for more? I don't know. Be aware of those people. Be aware of those people that try to limit you. Okay. Next card. Okay. Here we go. And we have guidance. And I do like guidance. That is a three that was reversed. So here we have this. Three is a creative number. It is a powerful number. Guidance. There is a supernatural guidance to this. There is the angelic guidance to this. This is the source. Reach out. You know, kind of goes along a little bit with your shadow. Look into that. You know, take time to meditate, to pray, to do those things. Um, this morality, you know, I, I, you know, this is, this morality is, and I, I mean, I'm not saying you should, we should, do what is right. I'm not saying that we shouldn't do what is right. The thing is, this morality is such a box. It, it's, it's so constricting. And it's not necessarily even doing what is right. It's what, you know, it's basically, this is the way it's always been done. This is the way you need to do it. So be careful with that. Be careful. I like innocence. I like saying take pleasure in the simple things. I like guidance. I, you know, Reach out to your higher power, whoever that is for you, okay? Yours is interesting, my Capricorns. Here we go. Um, again, too, that king of earth, though, is the top of your profession, is knowing things, is knowing what you need to know. Watch out for that air energy around you, though. Okay, let's see what we have here. I like these because a lot of times these tell me more what the 
latter half of the season is going to be about. So here we go. One, two, and three. Okay. King of Michael. Now, again, Michael is air energy. And remember, this is air energy, air energy. King of Michael knows what needs to be done. King of Michael stands up straight. So all this stuff that you've had to go through, possibly through that first half of the of the season, or possibly up to your, you know, because you've been making things happen with that full moon. You have been making things happen. You've been using that energy. But now the King of Michael says, enough is enough. And this, the King of Michael now can see clearly, okay? Wisdom and objectivity are important now. Stay in your integrity, a situation that calls for honest and open communication. Oh, principled, rational, ambitious, respected. Next card, eight of Ariel. Okay, Ariel is earth energy, your energy. Eight's unlimited opportunity. Just be ready for it. You know, if there's something that you're going after, because again, the king of earth stands, you know, this is the subject matter expert, knows what he's doing. Now, whether you're male or female, it doesn't matter. Knows what needs to be done. And now the eight of earth is saying, the eight of Ariel is kind of saying, you might need to, you know, make sure that you, you know, make sure that you um, check out the, you know, the websites. Make sure you know, make sure you are totally prepared if this is an interview. Or if this is you starting your new business, make sure you have your business plan ready. Make sure you spend some time maybe getting somebody to do your resume. But this is totally like just get prepared. Make sure because things are popping for you. Here we are. Take great pride in your excellent work. Practice makes perfect. Consider getting additional education or training. Your last card. The seven of Gabriel. So sevens, divine umbrella. Gabriel is fire energy, Leo Sagittarius and um, Aries energy, passionate burning, stand firm. You know, regardless of what people tell you, there is so many things out there that you can try, you can do. You know, I always say, you know, don't be afraid of, of don't be afraid of asking. You know, you know, I say this, you know, if you don't ask, the answer is always a no. If you do, the answer could still be a no, but there's a chance of a yes. Okay, so this is about stand up for what you believe in, have confidence, claim your personal power. So there has been some of the readings that have been a little bit on the, the rocky side, but yet at the same time, for you, my Capricorns, you know, it's probably the latter half of the, of the month where you're going to see the results. So keep firm, stand firm, be confident in yourself. And like I said, whatever that three of there, I can just see you. Okay, you know what? You want to come after me? You want to talk to me? Let's talk. But that actually, for you, my Capricorns, you actually um, keep communications open with a lot of people, which I think is wonderful. I think that's absolutely wonderful. Okay, let's see one card now. This is reversed. Ace of Action. This cherub is heralding a time of wonderful new opportunities related to your creativity, your career, or pursuing your dreams. This is a card of action, and if you've been procrastinating, it's time to really get busy. It's also a great time to start a new business. Have confidence in your abilities. So, like I said, you know, the beginning, hey, people might be trying to undermine you a little bit, but towards the end, you got this. You got this. Now... We do want to do our crystal or energy for my Capricorns. Here we go. Here we go. What will be helpful for you? Here we are. Onyx. That came up for, I think that came up for um, Virgo, I think. Or maybe not. Seeing the future, responsibility, stamina, self-mastery. You might want to get yourself some Onyx. Okay? Okay. Whew, okay, let's move that on. Now, my Capricorns, please, please press the like, share, subscribe. It does help. Thank you. More importantly, and this is probably the most important thing, my Capricorns, always know that you are loved. Stay shining and be blessed. Bye-bye.